Like you said in your life, the only way you could take over is by a coup. Now, say the guy who wanted to perform the coup is not well-liked at all, but the, and the guy who is the boss is very well-liked. How does that work, then? Hey, everybody. We're here for another episode of The Wise with Mr. Chaz Palminteri. And The Wise Guy. With me, Michael Francis. And uh, it's great to be back. And, you know, we, uh, we're quoting a lot of different people. Right now, we're on to Machiavelli because there's so much that you can learn from Machiavelli. For me, when I was in the hole, solitary confinement, I read The Prince along with the Bible. I got That's a crazy reading. That's First a crazy reading. The Prince <laughs> that's and crazy. you're reading the Bible. But I was calling, kind of going like back wow. and forth. And you know what? I was reading the book of Proverbs. Brilliant book. Yeah. Solomon was brilliant. Doesn't matter what faith you are. 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago. But when people... People are smart and they have something to say and they have insight and perspective. You listen because you can learn. Even if you disagree, might be something you, you don't you don't agree with them with, but you still listen and learn. Right. And it's crazy because I was listening, I was reading The Prince and I was reading Solomon at the same time and my head was like, wow. But you know what? I respect brilliance. To me, it's a turn on to read somebody that's smarter than me and that has such a perspective mm. on life. You know, some of the things I read, Chaz, I could say were life-saving to me. Yeah. I'll tell you this, in the book of Proverbs, and we're going to get to Machiavelli in a minute, the book of Proverbs said so many things that helped me in the mob life. Solomon said, be quick to listen and slow to respond. When you're in that life, before you make a statement, before you say anything, you better know what you're talking about because right. guys are very sharp. You say something out of the way, they can nail you with your own words, and there could be serious consequences. So I always became a very good listener, and Solomon says this 20, 30 times in different Proverbs. Be a good listener. Be, be slow to speak, quick to listen, and slow to anger. Slow to anger because if you get angry in that life and you say the wrong things, again, could be severe consequences. So I learned so many things that in a way could have been life-saving to me because sure. I had so many sit-downs. If you say the wrong thing, you, you either lose something, you lose a big argument, or maybe even suffer serious consequences over it. So it's it's important to, to listen to people and to mm. get your perspective on it and then hopefully apply it to your life. Machiavelli, a little bit different. You know, like we said, he was advising his prince how to maintain control of his kingdom. And he was saying things that were so wise. I mean, the things that he said, I find it hard to disagree with him, Chaz. I don't know about you. It is hard. It is, it is hard. No, But people say, oh, well, the guy is, uh, you know, he was uh, the devil. Said, no, he wasn't. He's just saying, look, this is the way it is. This is what you got to do. Yeah, we'll go to one of his uh, rules right now. The best fortress which a prince can possess is the affection of his people. Oh, I mean, how true is that? How true is that, bro? Listen, I don't care who you are. Look, we can apply it to what's happening today in a way. If the rumblings that we're hearing about Putin are true, and I don't know that they are. We read the newspaper, we hear stuff, we don't know, right. we take some of it with a grain of salt, but we listen. There's a lot of people in Russia that are not happy with what Putin did because they're suffering. They're suffering over it. Whether it was a, 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 um, a worthwhile war for him or not, people are not happy. It really it. wasn't. I don't see it as that. Where did he get this idea? It fascinates me. And we'll get back to Machiavelli in a second. Well, I think I want to take over some parts of uh, Ukraine or take over Ukraine. Why? You have all the money in the world. Your people, take care of your people. Why do exactly. you want to do this then? Why? So you could just say you're doing it? Sometimes I don't know. And I mean this sincerely, Michael. Sometimes I don't know if the devil, evil just got a hold of him and that's what they wanted. And why would you do that? For what reason? I don't get it. I don't get it either. But, you know, according to what we hear again, and this is, you know, we have to take it with a grain of salt. You know, he was a uh, stalwart in the Soviet Union. He was very upset when it collapsed. He wanted to put it back together again. He was concerned that some of the bordering countries were going to go NATO and he'd okay. have them right on their borders, which in a way is a legitimate concern. But we're peace loving nations. We weren't looking to we attack Russia. We weren't looking Russia. to hurt anybody. No, right? no, we would have never, it would have never happened. So I don't know. Maybe the guy, Maybe he was power hungry. I mean, who knows? I mean, he, yeah. you know, he gave all these reasons, but um, it's hard know. to make it's sense of it. Yeah. But, but it's a great quote because his people are becoming disenchanted with him right. because they're suffering. When you have the love of the people, you could last a long time. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it goes back to the Bronx tale. Is it better to be loved or feared? In a way, for a time, it's better to be feared. But in my opinion, when somebody loves you, they're not going to go against you. Yeah, you know what, Michael? That's a, I like I just your question. Like you said, in your life, the only way you could take over is by a coup. 
Now, say the guy who wanted to perform the coup is not well-liked at all, but the, and the guy who is the boss is very well-liked. How does that work, then? The guy who is not well-liked would be making a serious mistake. Serious mistake. Because, number one, he's not going to have the support of the troops around him. Most likely, he's going to lose. If the guy that was in control is loved or people cared about him or he was a good boss or people earned money with right. him, big thing. You earn money with somebody. They want to keep you in power. Right. That life, that's it. So, if he took took over, then he might get whacked. Absolutely. Listen, in the case of John Gotti, there was a lot of people that weren't happy with what John did. A lot of important people. Because it wasn't really a sanctioned hit on Paul Castellano. He but did it on his own. did he know he was going to get whacked if he did that? Well, I guess, you know, John had, John was John. And he felt, hey, I'll overcome it, you know. Wow. But, you know, also in John's case, in all due respect, if it was true that Paulie was thinking of whacking him, well, then you got to make the first move. Otherwise, you're sitting there waiting for something to happen. Uh. So, you know, you kind of understand. But I don't know. And again, I'm, I'm just talking, this is surmising. Right. I don't know how good a diplomat John was to smooth everything over. You know, let's say, let, let's get into this. Let's say that it was true. Paul Castellano was going to whack John Gotti and his crew because they were dealing with drugs. John said, hey, I'm not waiting for anybody. I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to take this guy out first, which in a way is the mob way. Right, but didn't Paul have to go to the rest of the commission to whack John Gotti? No. He didn't have Within to. Within your own family, you don't have to ask permission for any for anything for anybody. Oh. It's within his family. He had the perfect right to do whatever he wanted to do. Now, he could have told the other guys, I'm taking this guy out, but he didn't have to, okay? But let's say that was a legitimate concern John Gotti had. If that were me, in my case, what I would have done immediately after that, I would have called a meeting or went to everybody. I would have went to Chin. I would have went to Fat Tony. I would have went to Persico. I said, look, guys, what do you want me to do? Guy was going to kill me. Now, I don't want no trouble with any of you. Tell me how you want to handle this. Let's smooth this over. Maybe you weren't unhappy. You weren't happy with what I did, but come on. What am I going to do? This is our life. And try to smooth it over in some way yeah, so at least at least you're giving these guys the respect right you know and they might have said well what was the guy gonna do because i gotta tell you this too paul castellano wasn't loved either he wasn't no it was just the fact that he was a boss and you don't take out a boss without consulting some of the other bosses that's kind of a the unwritten rule so the fact that Gotti didn't do that it seems because i know persico was very unhappy about it chin put a contract with me. so do you him. think that if Gotti didn't get go to jail and didn't get sick sooner or later he would have been whacked i think so yes Unless he figured a way to smooth everything over, because he made an enemy out of Chin. Persico went to prison, you know, with him. The poor guy was always in jail, so who knows? I mean, he might have skated it just because everybody had so much trouble at that time. Remember when that happened, it was yeah, Rico, everything big, was yeah. going crazy already. I don't know how diplomatic Gotti was. He wasn't really that diplomatic. In my experience, no. And he had a temper. He had a temper, but, you know, you don't exercise that temper with the other bosses. I don't care who you are. You can't get away with that, Chess. You can't. You have to be a diplomat man with the other bosses really? you know yeah you know i'll bring this up have you watched the offer yes okay what do you think of it i know some of those people very well i knew al ruddy and i knew uh bob evans i'm watching it i like it they took a lot of dramatic liberty because yeah. that was my era i knew the whole colombo god godfather right. thing and i was pretty close with joey i liked him i liked yeah. him a lot and he was he was diplomatic but he went against family wishes because he was outspoken. He was out there. My boss is not supposed to be not on doing be there, yeah. late night shows and doing that. And he was warned. But maybe it got into his head. He enjoyed it. He liked the fame. He was the, who, who knows what the situation was. But uh, at the end, it didn't work for him. And Joey was well liked. He was well liked. So th they put a sanction on him, all the families? Yeah. I mean, nobody was upset when that happened, but except was, within the family. But when they whacked him, the guy who whacked him, they all whacked that guy. Oh, yeah. You think that was planned? Yes. 100%. I mean, planned to, they knew he was going to, they knew he would never get out of there alive. Wow. Thousand percent. I mean, everybody was carrying a piece that day. Right? <laughs> I got yeah. shot like 30 times. Yeah. I mean, there, there was no way. I mean, he was, he was a very foolish guy because he didn't realize he Take was being set up. Yeah. Wow. All right. But no. my point, my point there yeah. is Colombo was a well-liked guy, but he bucked everybody else and you can't do that. So would Gotti have lasted? I don't know. Another Machiavelli quote, all the armed prophets conquer, all the unarmed ones perish. Hey, you know what I like? I always like this this quote. This was from Ronald Reagan. I'm sure many people said it for yeah. peace through strength. You got a gun? I'm peaceful with you because if I'm not, you're going to shoot me. <laughs> you know, peace through strength. Another, men rise from one ambition to another. First, they seek to secure themselves against attack, and then they attack others. 
That's absolutely true. That's why we have castles back in the day, right? They build a wall around themselves so right. that they can't be hurt, and then they go out and get everybody else. Well, we always talked about, is it better to be loved or feared? He thinks a prince is better to be feared. You, and we always talked about it, it's better to be loved. As a person, as a prince, I don't know. Well, you know why, Chaz? Because I've seen so many guys turn on others on the street when they got more afraid of the government and doing the time. And I do believe that if they, I don't know, maybe it's who I am. If I love somebody, how do I turn against them? If I'm afraid of somebody, and I don't really care about him, but I, I fear him, but that fear is taken away, well, then I'm going to save myself. But if I love somebody, how could I hurt that person? But then there's a the thing like I told you about, like Michael, like Roy DeMeo, his crew. I mean, they were feared. Absolutely. But they weren't respected, I don't think. Well, when you say they were feared, I want to make this. They weren't feared by other made guys because the other made guys had nothing to fear because they weren't coming after made guys. They were going after guys on the street. In other words, they'd rather solve a problem by killing somebody than by trying to negotiate or fix it in another way. I mean, way. they were just, I heard there was a point they were like serial killers. I believe they were. They would just kill anybody. Yeah, I believe they were, and, and in, a, in a, a gory way. I mean, you know the stories in the Gemini Club. The Gemini I mean, Club, yeah, yeah I know I mean, all about it. Was, those, it was yeah. rough. But they weren't feared by, like people said to me, Michael, were you afraid of Roy DeMeo? Why did I have to be afraid of Roy DeMeo? He's not going to whack you out. No, and if I knew I had to be afraid of him, well then, I'm going to go first. This is the mentality you have. I'm going to take care of it first. Guys like Roy, Roy DeMeo never lasted, because people would say, hey, this guy's nuts, get rid of him. Get rid Even of him. if you were on his side, you would say he's too, he, he's, he's, he's too crazy. Yeah, he, he he's, he's, he's a, you know, he's a loose cannon, get rid of him. What do we need? Him for. So to be a boss in the mob, what do you think are the two qualities that you got to have? Listen, you got to be a disciplined guy. You want to survive as a boss? Right. Number one, be generous to the people under you. Don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. Well, boss is mostly greedy. Well, that's the one thing Castellano had against him. People knew him as being greedy. He was greedy. I heard that a lot, yeah. And I had a personal incident with him where he, he was rough in that way. Don't be greedy. And let your guys know that whatever you ask them to do, they know you can do it on your own. I'll give you an example. Persico. He was a tough guy. No question. He would never ask you to do anything that he wasn't even better than you at doing. So if Persico was telling you, you know, I'm sorry to say, go kill this guy, everybody knew that Persico would be the first one there if he had to be. But he's the boss. He didn't have to do that. So people got to respect you and know you in that way that, hey, this is a capable guy. Like, you know, the things you heard, again, I keep bringing up Castellano because he's the obvious. Ah, he's a businessman. What does he know? He doesn't know the street. We even see that in the movie, in the Gotti movie. That yeah, He doesn't know the street. So guys didn't respect him in that way. They didn't respect him. Plus, he was greedy. That's two things he had going against him. And I think Gotti had that in his head, too. Hey, I'm taking out a boss that's not too popular among his guys. When Neil, they really wanted Neil to be the boss, yeah. right? Neil Delacroix, yeah. Neil, on the other hand, was, you know, had a reputation. Yeah, he was, he was a street guy. But uh, be a true leader. You'll do anything you ask your guys to do, and don't be greedy. And I think almost the main thing is, don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. Chaz, when I had my guys, right, all associates, I would tell them, listen, if you want to get straightened out, you want to be a made guy, this is not the crew you belong in. Why not, Michael? Very simple. If I put time and effort into you and I propose you and you get made, I lose you. Everything I did for you is over with. It's gone. Now you're your own guy. You don't owe me anything. Okay? So why would I do that for you? You want to get made? Hey, more power to you. Great. I understand. I'm a made guy. Go and get made. But not here because I'm not proposing you. Now, if you want to make money, stay here because we're going to earn. They all stayed because money was more important. Wow. You know, maybe, maybe some of them thought, well, I'll make the money and then I'll leave. <laughs> you know, who knows? They might have thought that, but they didn't leave because they wanted to make money. So if you're a boss and people are earning around you, they don't want you to go. I'm telling you, Jazz. I, uh, that's true. That's my experience. Wow. Money, is, money is the power in that life. One must be a fox to recognize traps and a lion to frighten wolves. Well, it's a boss. Yeah, absolutely. You have to be a prince to understand the people, and you have to belong to the people to understand the prince. You know, it's almost like, where does he come up with these things? I mean, there's a guy laying in bed at night. One guy came up with all yeah. this shit. And listen, they're all quotes that people thought worthy enough to have them stand on their own and put out there for 
everybody to see and listen to and maybe benefit from. Again, you can benefit by rejecting these quotes and saying, hey, this is not the way to be. I don't, I don't want to live my life this way. I don't want to live that way. But realizing that other people do. I can see why the mob, that this was something for the mob. Men are always wicked at bottom unless they are made good by some compulsion. Well, wow. you know what? There's a, there's a faith component there too. Yeah. That we're we're born with a sinful nature. Think about it. We're born with it. We're not we're not born with a nature to always do good. We're born with a sinful nature, and we get better. I think according to maybe our own morality, according to you know, as a Christian, you know, we believe in God and we try to keep ourselves on track. But uh, I believe that I believe man is born with a sinful nature. I really I really believe that. Now that doesn't mean you're going to be a serial killer. You don't have to be. No, you right. A serial killer to right. have a sinful nature, but you know you're, you're ready to, at times to do the wrong thing, and it's something that has to pull you back. One should never permit a disorder to persist in order to avoid a war, for wars cannot be avoided and can only be deferred to the advantage of the others. Well, yeah, just like you said, if you know you're going to get whacked out, you better do it first. You better do it first. For in truth, there is no sure way of holding other than by destroying. Like, you have to destroy, you know, there's no way you could hold some people. I don't know if I agree with that one, Chess. quite honestly. I think... Some people, again, that's an individual thing. Some people have the ability yeah. to turn people around. Well, he always said, Machiavelli always said, when I read The Prince, if I remember, that you can never make a free state slaves and never make a slave state free. I agree with that. When you have a history of being free, you're not going to make them slaves. You're not. And when you have a history of being slaves, you're not going to, they're not going to accept freedom because they're too used to that. It's just like guys that have been institutionalized, did 30, 40, 50 years. A lot of them don't want to go home. They don't want to hit the street. They're afraid of it. They're afraid of the street. Absolutely, because they're so institutionalized. They're afraid of freedom. I get my three meals a day. I have my routine. I don't know how to do it any other way. It's, it, it, and I've seen it. Trust me, I've seen it. They get institutional. What was the longest guy you ever met in jail? Did you ever meet a guy who said, yeah, I've been there 30 years, 40 oh, years? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 35, 40 years, yeah. Calmest guys in the, you, you could ever meet. You know, okay, the guys that have done a lot of time. They're the calmest. They're the most serene. They mind their own business. Really? They don't get involved in anything. They're not in trouble. They go to work. They come back. They have their routine. You can spot them out. I don't, I don't even have to know anybody. I can tell you the guys when I walk in after my eight years there and see the guys that have done the most time. You can see it. When I did the movie, uh, analyze this with De Niro. And at the end, De Niro wanted to have real, real people, convicts. Mm -hmm. He didn't want no actors. That's the way Bob is, you know. I want real convicts. Mm -hmm. I want hard guys. So we go, oh. So we go to Sing Sing. And we're Sing Sing, and there's me, inmate Bob, and inmate, there's inmates between all of us, right? So, uh, you know, between takes, you got time. You know, mm -hmm. you got time to talk. So I know, growing up with people, that you never ask a guy what he did. Never. You ask how long he's been in. Right. You don't ask what he's here for. You ask how long he's got. You can ask questions right. like that. Mm -hmm. There was a kid there, not a kid, he was about 35 years old. I said, how long have you been there? He goes, I've been there 16 years. So now I'm going back 16 years of my life. I'm going, you've been there 16 years? I said, what do you got left? He goes, eh, possibly can get out in 25. But he said it like past the soul. Yeah. Yeah, can I have some soul, please? 25. So I was like, oh. So right away I knew he had to kill somebody. Mm -hmm. So we talked a little bit and, and we went back into filming. And then at the end I spoke to the guard and I said, do me a favor. I said, that guy that was on my left, what did he do? He said, oh, he killed two detectives. He'll never get out. He whacked two cops. He'll never get out. He's going to be here 40 years. And how was his temperament? Because they settled in. They know this is the deal. Calm, serene. They were the best guys to do time with. That's why they call it, because I spoke to another a good friend of mine who did time. He did he did a dime 10 years in Attica. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, how are you about that, Richie? And he goes, because that's why they call it doing time, man. Mm -hmm. you just do your time, man. Hard time is different, you know. Just do your time. Just relax. Do your time. Mind your business. Do your time. It takes some guys a while to understand that. You know, they try to buck the system right. and, and do different things. But I can point them out right away, the guys that have done a lot of time. And, you could point them out. Oh, yeah. And they're the guys you want to, honestly, you want to be around those guys in prison because you got no trouble. They're not looking to prove anything. But they want to be, leave me alone. Not going to bother you. Don't bother me. I'm not saying they're punks or anything like that, but, you know, they just know how to do time. Here's an interesting one by Machiavelli. Men seldom rise from low condition to high rank without employing either force or fraud. Unless that rank should be attained either by gift or inheritance. Well, he basically doesn't trust anybody. Anybody that's, uh, that's <laughs> got to try. the top has gotten yeah. there by fraud or, or some misdeeds on his part. I don't know if I agree with that either. You yeah. Know, 
I think sometimes we take a very <laughs> and, and it's obvious that you know Machiavelli had something in his past that he took a very cynical look at almost everything. He didn't trust things. Everything was cynical to him. And I think we <clears> got to <throat> see that, and that that had to be a product of his experiences of his environment. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think there are people that have gotten to the top through hard work and uh, and using their head. You know, well, right. Chaz, you're an example. Of it. You've got a work ethic as, as good or better than most. I mean, you're ready to do, you know, <laughs> yeah, no, triple work, time work. Man. I work, man. But you worked your, your butt off and yeah. you became successful and you did it the right way. So there are people that do that. I think, again, Machiavelli has a cynical look at that, at that point. But, yeah. but I also agree with him. There are a lot of people that have clawed their way in different ways. To well, get I mean, to the this top. guy, I mean, here, look, this quote, it's a long quote, but I'll, I'll read it. I don't doubt that every prince would like to be both about being love the fear mm -hmm. but since it is hard to accommodate these qualities if you have to make a choice to be feared is much safer than to be loved for it is good it is a good general rule that men that are ungrateful that men are ungrateful fickle liars and deceivers fearful of danger and greedy for gain love is a link of obligation which men because they are rotten will break anything that they think doing serves their advantage but fear involves dread of punishment for which they can never escape he just thinks everybody is yeah. a mother yeah, he does. I mean, again, this has to be a product of his experience and his uh, his environment, whatever he went through. And again, you know, he was oppressed in some. He way. was oppressed. He didn't trust anybody, and he was advising his prince not to trust people. Obviously, but I, I don't agree with that. I, I, yeah, I, I mean, my God, I could see why people just think he's part of the devil because he just he just said men are evil, and this the way it is. Yeah. But I got to be honest with you, Mike. I hate saying this, but you look what's happening today and you go, how could they do that? I'm going to be honest with you here, and I don't know. I, we're not going to suffer over it. But what's happening on our southern borders, I, w I want to tell you this. And I don't care who is in office, Republican, right. Democrat, my own brother. Right. If it was my own relative, I'd be incensed by this. Right. I, I think I had told you, I spoke to 850, and I've said this and people have heard this and I can't help, 850 border control patrol agents that said to me they're not even getting 10% of the illegal opioids that are coming across the border. There's no way in creation that our administration doesn't know this. People are dying, dying. daily. I mean, I can give you an article every single day, and these are young people. Young people. You, you and I are not doing this. Right, yes. Okay, these are young people, 15, 16 years old. 100,000 people last year between the ages of 24 and 45 died of opioid overdoses laced with fentanyl. And they're allowing this to come in over the border because for other reasons. So you're telling me they can't stop this? Of course they, they can. They can, of course they can. They, they have to secure our borders. That's it, because they're not going to stop it. And listen, you know this, Machiavelli knows this, anybody that pays attention know this. In the history of this world, every major empire that has fallen has fallen from within. They've weakened from within. The Romans, the Greeks, you name it, they've fallen from within and any enemy was able to conquer them because they weakened the country. But why would somebody who is an American want to weaken the country? But I see this all the time. Very simple. So maybe Machiavelli's right. Well, maybe we're idealistic and we're just like, we're leaving God, we're God-fearing men. But wh how does this, what is, what is happening here? It's got to be an individual personality trait. I, I say this, listen, I'm 71 years old. At this age, you know what I want? Yeah, I enjoy what I'm doing, but I want to pay my bills. Right. I want to take care of my family. I want to go on vacation with my wife. I don't want to conquer the world at this point in time. I've had a pretty, you know, experienced life. I've done a lot of things. I think you feel the same way. You love your work, but you're not looking to take over the planet. No. You're going to be the best actor in the world at no. this point in time. These people in Congress that are 75, 80 years old that have millions of dollars, what what more do you want? Why what do you more do you power? want? It's power. I, I, that's why I believe in term limits. I believe you should have Absolutely. two terms. Get out and get a job. It's intoxicating. It's intoxicating. Just like the being the boss, just like the mob, it's the same thing. They can't let it go. They can't let it go. Why? I don't get it. How do you have killings? 
Mass shootings in every city, every week. Chicago, Detroit, everywhere. Baltimore, Pittsburgh. All these 50, 60 young people die every week. Get shot every week. 10 people a day get shot in New York City. And what about Chicago? And listen, I'm not taking anything away from, you know, the poor people in Ukraine who have suffered in a war that was unnecessary. Right, but could you help us out? What about our own country? What about our own country? Our kids are dying every weekend. They're getting shot at. This is an epidemic in this right. country. They're dying of opioid right. uh, uh, overdosing. What are we doing about it? Nothing, folks. Think about that when you vote. We got to get people to try to stop this. I'm confused. I'm confused, and I know we're running out of time here, I, Michael. Well, you know what? I'm not confused because coming from the street, I get it. It's power, and it's it's intoxicating. They don't want to let it go. Look, you've had your experience. I spoke to the Senate staff on 9-11 a few years back, and they took me on a whole tour of all the buildings. These people don't want to let that. They don't even walk outside in the rain. Right. They have underground tunnels to take them everywhere they want to go. They go into a restaurant. Right. They're treated like kings. You have that experience. I had that experience. Right. It's nice. Okay, I get it. Okay, right. I enjoy it. But we they don't want to let it go. We have to help the people. We can't let all these kids die. No. We can't. That's Young the people. biggest epidemic we have in this country right now. And you know what? If we had the voices of all of these people that have lost a loved one, if they all came together, if we all rallied them and somehow, and we would see, people would understand, is this really happening? We have and to stop is. the drugs. We have to stop the violence in the street. Folks, we got on a tantrum there, and uh, but I think it was good. It's an important one. It's an important one. This is another episode of, of Paul and Terry, Francis, the wise. And the wise guy. And the wise guy here. So we'll be back uh, next week. Watch our podcast. Watch Michael's podcast, Michael Francis' podcast, my own podcast, Chaz Paul and Terry. But this is one that's just for Michael and I, talking about Machiavelli and a lot of other great philosophers. 